Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. My name is Natalie. If you are new here, I create all kinds of home and lifestyle content here on my channel. And today we're doing my dining room reveal. Y'all, this has been a long time coming. I have been working on this dining room since we moved in in May, and now it is end of November. Um, when we first moved into this house, this room was where all of the boxes came in from the moving van. Um, they all came in here and we sorted them out into their various rooms, but this room did not have anything in it for a long time. First thing that this room had in it was the hutch that I actually, or china cabinet, whatever you want to call it, um, that I painted, I refinished. It was my mother-in-law's china cabinet that she gave to us. And that was actually one of my first videos, I believe, was refinishing that china cabinet. So you can see the before and after in that video. I'll link it down below. Um, and I will also insert some photos here of what it looked like before versus after. And then once I was done with the china cabinet or the hutch, that was the only thing in this room for a long time. We just had like a little teeny rug in here to kind of just protect the floors. Um, an old rug from our apartment that I knew I wasn't going to keep because it was way too small, but that was in here and then the china cabinet and that was it. A little while later, I hung curtains in this room. I just did a very simple drop cloth curtain. I got a couple drop cloths from Home Depot. I'm not actually sure how long they are, um, but they're big. I have, I think these are nine foot ceilings and um, I have the rods hung almost all the way to the top. I bought the rods and the clips from Amazon and I can try to link those down below as well. And then the drop cloths from Home Depot. I did wash them um, and dry them to try to get them to be a little bit softer so that they're more like flimsy, like a curtain rather than stiff, like a drop cloth. Um, but one thing I didn't do that I've seen people do is bleach them. So people will bleach their drop cloths so that they're a little bit lighter. And that's just not something that I've done yet. To me, they look fine right now, but that might be something I do in the future. Um, just to lighten them up but I like them because they really block the light um, to kind of keep the heat out in the summer and then when you open them up they look really pretty so I just folded them over and clipped them on the little clips and hung the curtain um, and so those have been that was probably the second thing I did in this room um, pretty early on because obviously we needed curtains and I don't have blinds on any of our windows um, because I just did curtains instead maybe we'll get blinds eventually but um, they are pretty expensive so the next thing would probably be the buffet table. This came along a good while later. Um, my mom actually found this at a garage sale and it was originally brown and black two-toned, but it had a really nice shape and it was a really um, good fit for this particular wall in our dining room. So I just kind of put it in the dining room and just sat with it here and tried to figure out what I wanted to do with it. Um, and I also got this wall, this, um, window that was my mother-in-law had it in like her attic and I cleaned it up really good and hung it and made sure I got a little um a hanging kit from Home Depot to hang it and I did a whole little I think it was in a video it was a DIY vlog where I made this window into a cute wall hanging where I put the fruits of the spirit printables on it and hung that up um over this buffet table and then the buffet table more recently I refinished I did just use black spray paint, black can of spray paint, sprayed the whole table down. Um, and then I sealed it with a clear wax. And then I, um, I replaced the hardware. So I went from these old, very vintagey, um, gold hardware to a clear and gold pole, um, that looks a lot more modern. So I really love the way this table turned out. It's totally different than it was before and it just fits in with the more modern farmhouse look that I have going on in this room in particular. And it also ties in really nicely with the hutch since I painted the hutch in black as well. Um, I do have a little bit of Christmas decor on it right now because of course it's Christmas time, but when it's not the Christmas season, um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna put on it. Josh and I have talked about getting a lamp just for additional light in this room. So that might be something that we put on it um, as well. But. That's that side of the room. Um, on the wall right next to it, there's a cup, there's two small little walls. Cause when you come in our door, we have our dining room cut, like the cutout to come in the dining room. But then there's two little walls that you can't see when you're walking in the room, but you can see once you're in the room looking out. And I actually hung some different plates. So on one, I hung two plates that were my grandmother's 
they are beautiful one is the lord's prayer and it's got cracks in it but i just think that that just contributes to the character and then another one was just like a pink floral plate they don't really all match very well or match this room even but um considering you only really see them when you're sitting down i don't think it matters um and it's really special to me so and then i also have a little plate that my mother-in-law gave me um she said that they used to trade in their like her family i guess generations above um they would trade in flower sacks i think for plates and then they co made a collection of these dishes and so she gave me one of them which was cool and the other two i have were um they were given to me by my husband's grandma um, who i adore she's the best so i hung them the first few i hung with an actual plate hanger where it kind of um is a spring and you hook it on the plate and then the more recent ones i hung using these they're like stickers kind of um they're like a circle and you use water to um, activate the adhesive you stick it on the back of the plate and it's got a little loop that way you don't see it from the front um but it also pretty much just decreases your ability to ever use the plate for like eating purposes again um so just keep that in mind but i can link those on amazon as well and we had the project of all projects in this room um well actually first kind of uh, simultaneously we changed the light fixture in this room so this was a light fixture we got from Ikea I just ordered it online it came really fast and it was really easy to install my husband and I did it um, mostly he did it and I just held it just to make sure it didn't fall it is a little bit low right now we <laughs> we were trying to once we got it up and realized it was too low we kind of decided we'd just go back and fix it later we didn't want to mess with it at that particular time but it does need to come up a little bit um, but overall it's really nice quality and I can't believe it was from Ikea. It was like $70, I believe, which is not bad for a big statement piece in your dining room. It is, it does have black domes, so it limits a little bit of the light that you get from it. So we got um, light bulbs that were bigger and kind of come out the bottom. That's the way the photo on the Ikea website had it. And that helps a lot, but we also have a lot of natural light in this room during the daytime. So it's not a super huge issue. Then we have my dining room table. This table, was the project of all projects um this was a table that my i think i don't know if my mom found it or if i found it we were on the hunt on facebook marketplace for a nice dining room table because i had every intention of making this dining room into a formal dining room i know a lot of people have moved away from that um but for me i'm i'm pretty traditional and I love the idea of being able to host a large group or have all of our family in one place around the table. And so for now, I knew I just, I wanted to make this a formal dining room. Um, also with the intention that if need be, it can be used as a office. You can sit at the table and do your office work um, if you're working from home. Neither my husband or I are able to work from home. Um, but if, you know, someday we were, we could do that. Um, you know, later down the road, we have kids. It could be crafts. There's just, I feel like, a lot of ways that this can transform over the years but for now i wanted a formal dining room and this table we found on facebook marketplace it is an 80 inch i believe table with two leaves in it um so it can be i think i think it's 60 and then each leaf is 10 inches um so you can add it to be 80 inches which is how i have it right now and it came with eight chairs and it's solid wood it is a temple stewart piece um, and I loved everything about it. I loved the farmhouse style. I don't like when tables have like a pedestal in the middle. I like when they have four legs um, and kind of go straight down. I knew I wanted a rectangle and the style of the chairs was also what I wanted. They're those kind of old um, kind of vintagey looking farmhouse table chairs. And I loved everything about it. The price was right. This was a $3,000 set that we got for less than 10% of that and it's stunning. So the only thing I didn't like was that it was orange. <laughs> it had that old orangey stain on it, but I knew because it was real wood that that was something that I could change. So, so keep in mind when that piece is solid wood, that means you can strip it, restain it. Um, there's a lot more possibilities with solid wood, which is why I didn't want to get anything new because A, new dining room tables are very expensive and they're not really great quality anymore. They tend to have a veneer on top um, and not be real wood. And so then you're kind of stuck with whatever it looks like at that time. That's how it's always gonna look because you can't really paint it or stain it. Um, 
And I just like the older styles better personally. And this was a better deal because it came with all the chairs um, and it's a huge table. But so what I did to kind of refinish it was I knew I wanted a two-toned look because I knew I couldn't strip the legs of the table and the chairs easily. I knew that that would be a nightmare um, because I've stripped furniture before and it is very long process. And so I only committed to doing that on the top of the table because it's flat surface. Felt like it would be easier and I'm so glad that that's all I did because even doing the top of it was a bear. It was a pain. So I used my citrus strip, which is a gel stripper, painted it all over the table, let it sit for however long it sat on the container, except I think I did longer. And then you scrape it with a plastic um, scraping knife thing, get all the gunk off. Um, you can do it again, keep kind of going over it to try to get all those layers off. Then I went over it with um, mineral spirits to make sure that it was all cleaned off all the citrus strip and residue and then i sanded it down with an electric sander and i don't remember what kind of grit sanding paper but sanded it down that's when i realized it was light it was definitely a lot lighter but it didn't strip even or at least the wood that the table's made out of wasn't even so it looked like there was different tones of wood in it when it was stripped down so that was a little bit challenging. So I tried to bleach it. So I just took some bleach, like laundry bleach and water and a paintbrush and painted over it and let it sit. Um, and that did lighten it up some, but I just couldn't get it even. And so I knew I was gonna use a stain. I used this weathered gray um, finishing stain and a spongy brush, which is what it recommended. But I actually think you'd do better with a rag. I usually stain with a rag and I should have this time. Um, but I didn't, I used the brush. And after one coat of the stain, you could still see the uneven tones in the wood underneath. And so rather than being able to have a really light whitewashed gray kind of tabletop, I knew I had to go a little bit deeper to make it look even. And honestly, that was okay with me because it never really was about the depth. It was about the tone. So I did another layer. I might've done two or three layers of this stain. It's a deepish um, kind of, cool toned brownie gray color um, and it looks beautiful. So again, it's not so much about the depth of the color, but the tone. And so now I have this tone that doesn't have any of that orange. It's got a cooler tone. It goes beautifully with the floors. It is a little darker than I hoped, but it looks, it looks beautiful. I can't complain. Um, and then I just painted the base of the table with white chalk paint. I used Rust-Oleum Linen White because I had a can on hand and I got to use that up. Um, just took a little foam brush and did several layers of that, sealed it with a um, clear finishing wax. And afterwards, I still felt like the wax never really dried great. So I went over it again with a um, polycrylic. I used the satin finish polyurethane, I think, for the legs of the table. And the top, I should mention, I sealed with um, the semi-gloss polyurethane. I tried the matte at first and I didn't feel like it looked finished. It was a little bit more rustic, I think, than I was wanting, so I sealed it with the semi-gloss. I bought a semi-gloss um, polyurethane and sealed the top, and I, I love the way the tabletop turned out. I think it looks beautiful. Um, so then I did the chairs with just cans of Rust-Oleum white, or Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint, because I knew it would match the base. That was another reason I knew, you know, I didn't want to spray the table because I had the tabletop done, so I knew I was gonna have to paint the table legs, but then wanted to spray the chairs because of all the spindles and everything. And I knew Rust-Oleum Linen White, I could buy in both a paint can and a spray can. So it took probably a whole can of spray paint per chair. So it's like eight cans. Um, and then I sealed the chairs with the um, satin polyurethane. I just sealed the seat and like the back of it. Um, and that should be good. And then the table was done. So I did add some decor to it. I have a little table runner from Target some garland from Bargain Hunt, and then the little pine cones are also from Bargain Hunt, and then some wooden beads I think are from Hobby Lobby, um, and the candles were from Hobby Lobby as well. They're the battery-operated candles. Then I finished off this room with adding a rug. This is from Boutique Rugs. They also have it on Overstock and Wayfair, I believe, but um, Boutique Rugs was having 65% off for Black Friday, so I hopped on that and I'm so glad that I did. This rug is perfect for the space. It's beautiful, it's huge. Um, it fits the space really well and it kind of just ties everything in. So 
that was here. And then I finished it off yesterday actually with these wall decor items from Hobby Lobby. I liked them because there was two that were slightly different, but they were pretty affordable. I think they were, it was like 30 bucks for both. They were 15 a piece because they do 50% off. Um, on either side of the hutch, I just feel like it ties everything together. And then I have my little cardinal over here for Christmas, but when it's not Christmas, I might do some black and white family photos, I think, on that wall. So, or a cutting board, or a couple cutting boards, something like that. I did forget to mention, but this little hanging wall basket was from Goodwill. The plant in it is from Target. And then this basket was from a garage sale, and the greenery was from Joann's. And I just kind of hung those up with a couple of clear tacks. And I like how they would look. Also, the shiplap was standard or it wasn't standard, but the builder did it when he, when we moved in, we added that on. But anyways, you guys, I hope you liked this transformation. I'm gonna show some before and after photos, just so you can see kind of like what each piece of furniture looked like before versus after and how it kind of tied the whole room in together. Um, if you like videos like this, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. I will be doing a couple of more exciting room renovations in the coming months hopefully a laundry room and a powder bath and a guest bedroom. So stay tuned for those and I'll see you guys in my next one. Thanks for watching.